got to be willing to die for this. You never feel this level of happiness if you don't go for something. When they knock you down, get that resolve. And feel this level of happiness as you rise. I'm gone so long away from my home. On South Siders with the guns and two. Well, the festivities began in January for what was to be a year-long celebration of 30 years of UFC action, but who could have known 2023 would deliver like few calendar years before it? Today, we celebrate the banner 2023 that was for the combat sports leader with a look back at all of the big moments. And with that, welcome inside our plush studio here. It is the 2023 UFC Year in Review. I'm John Anik, alongside a pair of bona fide mixed martial arts legends to my right, one of one, the inimitable Chael P. Sonnen. And of course, to my left, the UFC Hall of Famer, former double champion, Daniel Cormier. DC, I'll start with you, man. What an absolutely frantic, furious year for the MMA leader. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And John, you and I had the opportunity to sit next to the octagon for some of the biggest moments that we have ever seen in the UFC's history. This year started with a bang, with Jamal Hill becoming the champion, and it just continued to get better, better, and better, and it grew. And it was one of the funnest years that I've ever been a part of as a part of the UFC. And I just feel it's so pivotal. Like, when Dana White's in front of the media next year taking a bow for doing so great in 2024, he's going to have to thank some things that happened in 2023. I can go back to the Madison Square Garden Code. John Jones has never watched an event so closely. What is going to happen with Aspinall? Is Stipe going to get involved? Now, Piera says that he might be going up to heavyweight, but Jamal Hill would like a shot first. I'm just sharing for you. We got a lot of loose ends. 2024 is set up very nicely. We're going to clean it all up next year. But coming up today, we're going to look back at all the big storylines, or at least many of them, from 2023. Three. These guys will give out a handful of 2023 awards. Megan O'Leary sits down with one of the biggest stars of the year, Sugar Sean O'Malley. And we will also present the top plays of 2023. Of course, that list is open to interpretation. And a lot of headline grabbers here in 2023. It's hard to settle on one top storyline. But let us begin with Sugar Sean O'Malley, certainly one of the biggest winners of 2020. Everything that he did, guys, he was, you want to hear about a record he's got? He was ranked number 10. He had one win over Peter Young. He went from 10 to 1 overnight. We just haven't had anything like that happen. That draws him in to a title fight. Daniel, I was there live as you were, but this crowd and the reception he had, you might think that that's going to elevate a guy. It could also bring a pressure. This young man dealt with that pressure, took out possibly the greatest 35-pounder we've ever seen and is now the world champion. You know, when we saw him fight Piotr Jan, you recognized that he belonged at the top of the division. You knew that it was not hype anymore because people always wanted to say Sean O'Malley was cherry picking. He was fighting good fights for him. He fought Piotr Jan, a striker that was just like him, and he got the job done. Fast forward to Boston, and you get Aljamain Sterling, who is rolling, who had just beaten Henry Cejudo. Sean O'Malley not only stepped in there and got the job done, he did it in tremendous fashion and really did not only put people on notice, but elevated the entire Bantamweight division. Yes. This kid's a star, man. He has it. And for years, his Bantamweight peers really questioned just how elite Sean O'Malley was. But when his title shot came, man, he didn't miss. Sean O'Malley basically blossomed into this personality that is so much bigger than what you would imagine it could have been. 
when he went out there in Contender Series, that moment thrust Sean into the spotlight. There's a look at Sean O'Malley. Sean O'Malley, he was highly touted coming into that show. And what does he do that night? He earns a highlight reel knockout of his own. Oh, that's it! That is it! Sean O'Malley with a huge right hand! Welcome to the Sugar Show! Always wanted to be rich. I always wanted to be famous, but I never knew how I would do it. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm looking for exciting, I'm looking for flashy, I'm looking for somebody who has that thing. Sean O'Malley is that thing. Woo! He's the guy. I would be insane at the science kit. It has been an expeditious rise from Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series here to the greatest proven ground in the sport. O'Malley enters the octagon. Sugar Show, live and in color. It couldn't have gone any better for Sean O'Malley. Oh! The walk off KO! Sean O'Malley is that perfect mix of talent and just unapologetically real. That's as good as it gets. It's too easy. This kid has that it thing. Another highlight for the real. There's something about it. He said he is going to be a world champion. That's always been the goal, and he has never lost sight of that, regardless of how popular he has become. I started fighting when I was 16 years old. 12 years later, I'm fighting for the title. Sugar Sean O'Malley gets his first crack at a UFC world title. See what he has for the dominant champion here in Boston, Massachusetts. Sean O'Malley has a ton of skill. How does he compete in the biggest spot in his career? I go out there and beat Aljamain Sterling to become a superstar. Are you ready to watch me knock this dude out? Well, if you are what you say you are, a superstar, not a bad time. Take it to the next level and cap it with a world title tonight. Sean O'Malley promises that he is going to show up and win this fight. If this kid can become champion tonight, this arena will go crazy. the most nervous I've ever been for a fight. In my eyes, Aljamain Sterling is the best bantamweight of all time, but I never lost the confidence because I know what I possess in this right hand, baby! You just saw Sean O'Malley go to the next level. He lands a beautiful right hand against Aljamain Sterling, and he finishes him. There is nothing like a guy having an opportunity and then cashing it in that way. The world sugar! Man, the kid from Montana, from a baby face prospect to a world champion, he was awarded a contract on season one of Dana White's Contender Series back in 2017. Made his UFC debut about six months later. He battled adversity, but eventually got past Terry on Ware in that fight. One of his big early moments you saw in the feature, it came at UFC 250. He knocked out Eddie Wineland during the pandemic. Then UFC 252, O'Malley suffers his first career loss. Body failed him again against Marlon Chito Vera, but of course he would respond in kind thereafter later. An outstanding performance on Fight Island secured the number one contender spot from Kyoto Yan, and then of course the championship moment at UFC 292 in Boston. Sean O'Malley, the second contender series alum to hold a UFC belt. All right, a lot of other big storylines from 2023. I know these guys are excited to talk about Poetan Alex Pedeta, one of the biggest superstars in the sport right now. And his year began by losing the belt to Israel Adesanya. Two wins at 205, and now he's back on top of the world. It's crazy, and I'm a Marvel fan. So there's a movie called The Avengers, and a guy named Thanos. He, there's a blip, and then everything changes. That is what Alex Pedeta is. He was a guy that wasn't here, and then all of a sudden he's here, and he's one of the best in the world. So we go to Miami, and he's fighting Israel Adesanya, and Israel Adesanya gets the job done. You imagine, now this guy who has very few fights is gonna go back to becoming normal. Nope, 
He goes to beat Sean Bohovich, becomes the number one contender at the next weight class, and then wins the belt. He is a phenomenal talent. He is a tremendous striker and improved wrestling. And he's one of the best in the world, man. It's unbelievable what he's done. I was planning to jump in on Pierre, but now I got to deal with you. Do you think we don't know who Thanos is? Well, what was that all about? Thanos you talking about Pereira. Superman and what uh, Kryptonite yeah. is? Come on. <laughs> I got to tell you guys a narrative. You want to hear a narrative from a year ago? It's the first triple champ we were ever going to have. It's a guy named Hansmat Chemayev. Now, all of a sudden, Piera, who was not even in the conversation because he'd only had five fights, he had no belts, uh, all of a sudden, is only one win away. He's talking about going up to heavyweight. You guys saw this from his coach, uh, Glover Teixeira. I think it's a big deal. We're getting ahead of ourselves. I understand that. But as we are looking forward to 2024, Daniel, it might be a fair prediction to say he, that Piera tries the waters at heavyweight yeah, eventually. He's so good. He's, so, he's good. so good. And the appetite for MMA knowledge is just disgusting. Right? Why like, isn't he, he just... more scared, by the way? What's he know about MMA? What's he doing out there on the ground? Right. He should be he doesn't know, he doesn't care, so he can accomplish anything. I mean, uh, Yuri was in there doing all kind of weird stuff, dancing. Sure. Pereira's just looking at him like, I'm going to kick your butt. Wow. All right, as we move on to another champion, Shale, sort of hard to argue with all that Islam Akashev accomplished in 2023. Begins with the first fight against Volkanovski and then caps the year with his ultimate career highlight to date. And I'd love to see a little bit of parody. I mean, Islam has got a little bit of everything, including he's the heir apparent to the throne from King Khabib himself. It's a very interesting thing. Islam had to go into this fight uh, with Volk. There's not a lot on it for him, in all fairness. This was a short notice. I want to say it was eight days, guys. There's not a lot on it for him. It's not the opponent he was planning to have. It's a difficult fight. There's nothing to lose for Volk, which means there's everything to lose for Islam, and he still found a way to outdo himself. Yeah, he's amazing, man. He can do it all inside the octagon. And he does have that star potential. He will need a dance partner to elevate him, though, as he goes forward. Luckily for Islam Mahachev, those dominant performances and those great contenders behind him, the Gaethje's, the Poirier's, really have him looking like the future is very bright for the, the lightweight champion of the world. All right, to the welterweight division, what would be in store for Leon Edwards in 2023? He had one of the more viral knockouts in UFC history in 2022, and man, did he deliver and rise up again this year. I mean, he's gotten better. He gets better every single time. Leon Rocky Edwards was known as a slick striker, but now he's out there taking Kamaru Usman down. He's taking Colby Covington down. And that performance in London really did show who Leon Edwards is, because not dealing with the altitude allowed for him, to outman one of the greatest welterweights of all time. And then he ends the last era by beating Colby Covington at UFC 296. When he got the jump in the trilogy over Kamar Usman, the narrative, of course, was, well, Kamar got old overnight. It happens to all fighters. And we didn't really give Leon his credit. Then when you see how well Kamar does later on with Shemaev, and you fast forward to UFC 296, he looked amazing. I'm talking about Leon. He looked amazing against Colby Covington. So 25-minute fight, he won 25 minutes of that fight, in yeah. my opinion. And he out-wrestled him. He out-conditioned him. Things that we would have favored Colby in. And he did this all while being very emotionally high. He had to bring himself back down. He's a great competitor. Now, he certainly has taken out Kamar Usman and Colby Covington, but a lot of talent coming up. Of course, Bilal Muhammad, who fought and won his only fight of the year against Gilbert Burns, Ian Machado, Gary, 3-0 in 2023. Thanos. Right? Shavkat <laughs> Rachmanov and, and Jack Della Maddalena. So a lot of potential challengers for Leon Edwards in 2024. <laughs> all right, coming up next... We will give you the top 10 plays from 2023. And I can assuredly tell you, we had a really hard time paring down this list. We will reveal it next and discuss it with you. The 2023 UFC Year in Review continues in a skosh. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are about to see something that you have never seen before. The ultimate fighting challenge. 30 years of rich history. Legendary champions and indelible moments. 30 years of the UFC in 30 seconds starts now. There's no pressure. Great jujitsu all the way. Bloodied, battered, but neither can be beaten. Wow. How good is this? Oh! He fought, kicked him in the face once again. First round finish for the champion. All right, welcome back to our 2023 UFC Year in Review. Alongside Daniel Cormier and Chael Sonnen, I am John Anik. So as we look ahead 
to the top 10 plays of 2023. This is a year that had it all from new champions being crowned as some of the greatest highlights you will ever see. This could be argued as the greatest year in UFC history. Let us now reveal our top 10 plays of a memorable 2023. And we begin at number 10 with a knockout from our final live event of 2023 UFC 296, another one and done for Josh Emmett, DC. It was crazy knockout by Josh Emmett. Guys, we have seen these types of knockouts before, but generally it's from a kick. The sound that this punch made when he landed on Bryce Mitchell was crazy. We were sitting next to the octagon, and it was crazy how loud it sounded, and he hit him. All right, Chael, number nine, the rarest of things in Austin, Texas. Back-to-back -back slam knockouts. Shakar close up first. You know, Matt Hughes, the legend himself, used to show up to the arena early. He'd walk the octagon. He claimed there was harder spots. And when he picked his opponent up, he would try to put him down on that. I'm not sure this isn't a little bit of a flashback. Not just one, but two in a row in almost the same position. Cody Brundage getting it done as well. What a moment back to back there in Austin, Texas. All right, number eight, Robbie Lawler, DC. What a way to go out. What a fairy tale ending for Robbie Lawler. He goes in there against Nico Price, gets the knockout in his retirement fight. No one gets it. Robbie Lawler then gets a send off package that brings tears to one of those violent men we've ever seen in the octagon. All right, number seven, UFC 295. Chael Tommy Aspinall has arrived. This is what dreams are made of. This was at the Mecca, and watch the reaction by Aspinall. He finds out that he's the now champion. I really like a guy that's happy to win, but I also like to see, because Tom put himself at danger, right? These punches don't just happen. You gotta step into the fire, and there is your active heavyweight champion. All right, TC at number six, somewhat surprisingly this low, Justin Gaethje's BMF knockout of Dustin Poirier. Justin Gaethje with a head kick to knock Dustin Poirier out was not something we expected. He has become more and more patient, and by becoming more patient, he finds knockouts that you don't expect to see. What a performance from Salt Lake City by the highlight. All right, that brings us to the top five. Chael, first pay-per-view of the year, UFC 283. Welcome to the big show, Ismael Bonfim. Well, and McKinney's on the other side of it. Look, I mean, he's got his hand raised plenty of times, but I feel like the cage screwed him here. He needed to move. He needed to have some footwork. He couldn't back up. The fence was holding him in place. Perfect spot for the opponent to land the knee. All right, at number four, DC, a no-doubter, Alexa Grasso over Valentina Shevchenko. This was one of the more surprising outcomes we have seen all year. Alexa Grasso had so much pressure on this joke that she changed the color of Valentina's face. But talk about historical. This changed the entire UFC flyweight division. All right, number three, Islam Makashev with the head kick against Alexander Volkanovsky. Yeah, and you know what? I felt short changed here. I wanted some more minutes. I was so looking forward to this contest. This happened about two, three minutes in. I wanted to see the next 20, 22 minutes of this. But Islam, who had everything at risk, the grappling heavy, landed the head kick for the knockout. All right, number two, the Aljamain Sterling era begins in Boston. The Sean O'Malley era, look, John, this guy, Sean O'Malley, has a ton of star potential, but it was the step back right hand, very reminiscent of Conor McGregor knocking out Jose Aldo that allowed for him to become the Bantamweight champ of the world. All right, we'll see how it goes for Sean O'Malley in 24, and then at number one, Dateline Miami, Florida, USA, so. Payera never makes these mistakes. I mean, look, you gotta have your chin down and your hands up. He broke that rule, and he broke that rule in front of Adesanya, who's one of the great strikers ever, and he paid for it. All right, we congratulate all of those athletes who cracked our very exclusive top 10 list in 2023. Well, no trophies in the budget per se, but we do have some awards to dole out today. Let's begin with the submission of the year, a play that found its way onto our top 10 for you, Chael Son and Alexa Grasso. Oh, come on, it had to be. And guys, I mean, don't think that I'm trying to sell you that the most impressive submission is a rear naked choke. This dates back to Hoist Grace at UFC 1. It was the significance. It's what the choke meant. It's the fact that she was losing. She was a four to one underdog to the bullet of which she should have been. I didn't think the fight was going her way. I thought that she was getting fatigued. I thought we were turning to a moral victory, which means you lose the fight, but you made it to the distance. That is not the script that she had in mind. She found a way to get to this position. She found a way to get her arms around the neck. She found a way to finish, and that was for the world championship. You know, for me, it was about Alexa Grasso not only winning this fight by submission, but what it meant to the entire flyweight division. When you have a long reign of champion like Valentina, it almost becomes who's next and how soon does Valentina get it done. She didn't only beat her. She didn't doubles it back and beats her again. She doesn't get that opportunity if she does not force Valentina into a mistake that ultimately cost her her championship. Great job 
by Alexa Grasso. All right, knockout of the year, I think a far more competitive category. So many possibilities, directions in which you could go, Chael. What was the knockout of the year for you? All right, I got to give it to uh, Justin Gaethje here. Look, the BMF title is very relevant to me. I love it. I wish it had a lineage. I wish we did a little bit more of them, but this was a rematch. And just to remind you all, Poirier was the victor in the first one. Gaethje called for this fight. Gaethje said, I want to do it again. I remember as a fan thinking, why would either of you want to go through that bludgeoning? Here's the answer, because Gaethje Gaethje had a trick for him. He was going to use that kick, except he was going to take it upstairs, and he is now your BMF champion. Yeah, you know, for me, it was Max Holloway beating the Korean zombie. Look, man, because Max Holloway not only put him out, that was kind of what you almost thought may happen, because zombie was getting up in age. But zombie made a decision. I'm going out on my shield. It was so Korean zombie that he was getting beat, and he decided, I'm just going to fight this dude. Max Holloway finds the knockout that puts the zombie out in tremendous fashion. But look at Korean zombie. Ooh. Just going oh. forward and Max hits him with a beautiful overhand right that face plants him and he wins unbelievable performance by Max Holloway and hats off to the Korean zombie. All right, knockout of the year for me, runner up Derek Lewis, but the hardware goes to Benoit. Seek and destroy Santini goes into the belly of the beast, the Mecca, Madison Square Garden, and he puts a head kick on Matt Frivola that really is going to propel him into big things in 2024. You can argue Benoit Santini was one of the biggest success stories on the entire roster this year, and what a capstone on his 2023 as he knocks Matt Frivola out cold. All right. Plenty more hardware coming up on this year, 2023 UFC year in review. But coming up next, we will shine the spotlight on some high profile athletes who laid down the gloves and walked away seemingly for good in 2023. Stay with us on ESPN. You're a All right, 2023 UFC year in review continues as we show you the five biggest betting upsets of 2023. And can we put some respect on the name Elvis Brenner? Remarkably, his wins over Guram Kukatsaladze and Zubera Tahugov were two of the biggest upsets of the year. Shout out to Nicholas Dalby, bottom of your screen, with, for his win over Gabriel Bonfin and, of course, Alexa Grasso over Valentina Shevchenko. All right, welcome back inside our studio. John Anik, Daniel Cormier, and Chael Sonnen as we now transition to the biggest and best UFC moments of the year. And perhaps no singular result was as incredible as what Sean Strickland did against Israel Adesanya. Yeah, it was unbelievable. He went down to Australia. There was a guy named Crocodile Dundee that would wear a hat <laughs> in Australia. Well, Sean Strickland went down there, and he had this hat on, and people started to cheer him. And then he went in there, and he fought Israel Adesanya, a guy that was supposed to be loved in that region, and he beat him. The way he approached that fight, Sean Strickland didn't know himself if he could win. He had doubts going into the octagon, but the moment the octagon door closed, he was on the gas the entire time, and he took the belt from Ed Asanya. One of the best performances I've seen by a challenger in a really long time. Great job to Sean Strickland. And From Thanos to Crocodile Dundee, you are on fire today, my friend. All right, I got to tell you guys, I can't think of anything an athlete would like to do more than to inspire. But it is such a rare opportunity when you can do that. You're more likely to become a champion than you are to inspire a sport or inspire the viewer. Kamara Usman, even in defeat for me, was the moment of the entire year. Kamara Usman, on eight days' notice, flew to a different continent into a weight class that he had never competed to take on a younger, hungrier, three-to-one favorite in Hazmat Chemaev. Kamara was risking everything in doing this. Don't forget, when Kamara Usman was champion at 170, Hazmat Chemaev was a 170-pounder, and they never got matched up. So by Kamara accepting this fight, he is risking everything. It is the ultimate game of poker where you all chips are in. He went and did it anyway. One licensed judge thought he won the fight. Many viewers thought he won the fight fight. He was this close to being the number one contender in a weight class that he'd never been in before. That, for me, was the moment of the year. I like him going in that direction. It's a little bit off the beaten path, right? But I like what you're doing there. And when I think back to him accepting that fight, felt like one of the bigger moments of 2023. This, of course, will also be remembered as a year that a lot of high-profile athletes retired from Hall of Famers to legends. We also had the greatest of all time walk away for good. The king of Miami, Jorge Masvidal, does not go out with a win, but he does go out with this showcase in Miami, and uh, that dude's one-on-one, man. You got to tip your hat to Gamebred Masvidal for what he did and what he became. 
at the latter part of his career, he became an absolute star. I mean, he's a legend. He's a, one of the craftiest veterans that ever fought in the sport, one of the greatest personalities. You know, sometimes your favorite basketball player ain't got that three-pointer no more. Your favorite quarterback loses that rifle. I don't feel the same when I get in here no more. It's been 20 long years. I love all of you. UFC came here 20 years ago, and it inspired me to chase this dream for 20 years, 50-some fights later. Hopefully I inspired somebody in here to go fight for theirs, no matter what it is. Yo, Padway. Glover Teixeira hangs up the gloves for good here tonight. This career would have been exceptional even without a UFC title, but he's able to get that belt before he walks away. Glover oh! Teixeira breaks through at 42! He could go out like that, right? Fighting for a championship, fighting and showing that grit and determination. Nuts. Unbelievable. Tonight is a perfect night to retire and to leave you happy forever. She is the greatest of all time, and she has distanced herself to such an extent that I'm just not sure anyone's going to ever catch her. I mean, she did it all. She beat everybody. Double jumping forever, baby. Oh! Oh! oh. 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 Robbie Lawler goes out with a walk-off oh. KO! Oh. Wow! There are no fairy tales in fighting. Robbie Lawler just living one right now. He looked like the championship-level Robbie Lawler. He pulled out that performance from the Robbie Lawler of old. This will go down as one of the greatest retirements in UFC history. Eu paro aqui hoje, pessoal. Ganhando os fãs do mundo inteiro. Shogun made you get chills every time he hit that curve. He will go down in history as one of the all-time greats. The Korean zombie lays the gloves down in the octagon. He will forever be remembered. Absolute legend, a man who has carried a region for many, many years and given us incredible moments. Who knows if anybody will ever do what she was able to do ever again, the way she was able to hold both those belts in dominant fashion. It is the end of an era for the former UFC and Pride Grand Prix champion. On behalf of everyone, all the fight fans around the world, we want to thank you for all the sacrifice, the excitement, the finishes. So ladies and gentlemen, one more time, show your appreciation for the Korean zombie, ruthless Robbie Lawler! Amanda Nunes, Jorge Masvidal! Glover Teixeira and Shogun Hua. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the memories. Well, hard not to get chills as so many mixed martial arts legends walk away in 2023, but it feels like we need to lead the conversation with the greatest of all time, Amanda Nunes, going out on a high note and going out on her terms. Yeah, going out on her terms. And I just remember going into the octagon with the idea that this might happen and having this pit in my stomach because she changed so much in terms of the way we view not only women in fighting, but double champions because she not only defended one belt, she was going up and down in weight class and really did separate herself from the fighters in two different weight classes. She truly was a special talent, and it just felt like it was too soon, even though you know it was probably the right time. Sure. We always want to hold on, and sometimes we hold on for too long. Amanda made the right decision. It was perfect. And I got to tell you guys, look, you can't have a comeback fight if you don't leave first. I don't know how much I buy the retirement. I know that yeah. Amanda's got more left. I mean, look, Cyborg and Ronda Rousey, that was this big fight that never came to be. Those two ladies have one thing in common, which is neither of them saw a second round against Amanda Nunes. I mean, not for nothing. This girl is wonderful. If she wants to go into training her motherhood, I wish her the best, but I'm not totally convinced that I'm signing off on the idea she's done in the octagon for good. I'm so with you. I find it exceedingly hard to believe that the competitor inside Amanda Nunes is buried forever. Robbie Lawler might be done, and if he is, what a way for him to go out. Oh, my goodness. That was so nostalgic. Our, our, our team that put that edit together, Shogun is all done. Oh, that was hard to see. The great Glover to share. I fought Glover a couple times in a back room, D.C. He's as good as people tell you he is. <laughs> that guy is the real deal. He's got more bullets left, too, but he just said, you know what? If I can't be champion, I'm going to pass the torch. I'm going to start training other guys. Now he's the coach of a world champion in Payera. That was a pretty quick year. It was crazy. You know, watching Robbie Lawler, this guy has long been one of the most violent guys we've had in the UFC. And the way that he went through Nico Price with the uppercut and the overhand, and when he went down, you start to smile. And then they played that package. Robbie got the perfect ending. And he started to, the lips started to quiver. Yep. And the tears came out from Ruthless Robbie Lawler. And you thought, man, I'm happy for this dude. 
And, and no guy deserves it more than Robbie to go out in that way. It was tremendous. All right, well, as we look now from sort of the past to the future, the UFC cupboard is the opposite of Bear, right? There are so many rising stars walking through that door, and for you, Tatiana Suarez is the woman you'd like to highlight. Well, and welcome back. And I, I got to admit, guys, I'm a front runner, and she's a wrestler, and I'm an old wrestler at heart. But, I, got, I mean, I've got to tell you, Tatiana Suarez doesn't really have a close second. She is taking everybody down. She will tell the entire world what her game plan is. If you go watch five of her fights, you, they're all the same fight. She gets her hands on you. She drags you down. She's the new school Ben Askren. What Ben did when he went on his run is what she is doing right now. I think that she's the top gal. I'm glad that she's not hurt anymore. I'm glad that she's back. Yeah, she's a phenomenal fighter and a great wrestler. But for me, it's Ian Machado Gary, man. Sometimes you see a fighter and they just kind of have that thing. This young man spoke a lot when he first jumped on the scene. People react to him and he can fight. He's long, he's got tremendous striking, he's got incredible patience and he has that it factor. Now, things have turned from a little bit as the year went to the end, but a few great performances and Ian Gary will be right back on the tip of everybody's tongue for the right reason. He is a great young fighter. He has a ton of potential. All right, a lot of different ways you could go here. Honorable mention to me to Diego Lopez, but Brendan Allen, 3-0 this year, three wins by rear naked choke. Five of his last six wins have come by rear naked choke. Submission offense, I have said repeatedly, is a lost art. This dude puts people away. Like, how many guys in the middleweight division really want to see him show up in their bracket? I believe he will fight for the title in 2024. 28 professional fights before his 28th birthday. I am all in on BA. That Paul Craig fight, I, I got to be honest, man. He was a favorite, and I wasn't sure why. And then I watched yeah. the fight and was like, wow, Brennan Allen is the real deal. And a new award for catchphrase of the year goes to John Anik with submission offense. I like that, Thank and I'm going to use that. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. And real quickly, Shara Boot and Mago Meadow. Oh, Shara Bullet, man. Sure. I thought he'd be your guy. That dude is crazy. He can fight. And he, he kind of looks a little crazy. Shower Bullet is my guy also. He's the man. <laughs> and also shout out He's to fun. Bo Nickel, who made his UFC debut yeah. in 2023. Just felt like we should at least mention his name on our 2023 UFC year in review. All right, coming up next, we will get back to the awards as we look at the top fighters and fights of 2023. A lot of different talent from which to choose, but we'll need your winners on the other side as the 2023 UFC year in review continues live. All right, welcome back to the 2023 UFC Year in Review show. John Anik, Daniel Cormier, and Shail Sonnen on hand. And as we sort of illustrated off the top of the show, few men or women had a more productive 2023 than one Sugar Sean O'Malley, who recently, after attaining the title, sat down with our own Megan O'Leary. curious if you've heard this mantra by Teddy Atlas, our good friend and obviously a legend in the boxing game, where he said the champion gets better by about 30% by just having the belt. <laughs> I did gain a lot of confidence knowing Aljo, in my eyes, was the hardest fight in the division. The best grappler, one of the best wrestlers. He's really well at putting together, defended the belt more than anyone. Um, he was just a very, very dangerous opponent. So to go out there, stuff both of his takedowns, and then get him out of there in seven minutes and, and, and take him out. Um, definitely gained a lot of confidence, yeah. You have connected with so many people. Chins. My, well, yes, ch you have connected with so many chins, but you've connected with fans around the world. In Boston, I mean, they were chanting your name from the press conference to the weigh-ins to the fight. What do you attribute that to? I, I, I like to think it's, you know, comes down to the performances, the, the, the amount of knockouts, the highlight reels that I put on. You know, you, you go to knock someone out in crazy fashion, you know, that's on Instagram, that gets circulating through the algorithm, and then the random people start seeing it, and I've done that a lot. I like to think I'm funny and good looking too, it <laughs> helps, but I attribute uh, most of it to the knockouts, just the performances, and obviously the UFC's platform. Something's wrong with O'Malley's leg. I don't know what happened. Get up, up, get fell up. down. Oh! Huge elbow from Chino, and that is it! Marlon Chito Guerra stops the Sugar Show in round one. What do you think when you look back upon that first fight with Cheeto? I mean, how how do you assess the whole thing? What are your honest opinions? I was whooping his ass. He got lucky. That's that's how I've felt ever since that fight happened. And I do believe truly he will never admit it, but he knows how lucky he got that night. Um, but it worked out good. I'm very excited. I've never been this excited for a fight. Really? Well, I mean, each fight I probably will say that, but. 
Yeah, there's something extra on this one. How did Cheeto become the guy that was gonna get the opportunity? Because you have a whole line. Oh, it's money? Money, 100%. And it's not even just my call. If, I could, if it was my call, it would be Cheeto, but it's not my call, it's the UFC's call. And the UFC picked Cheeto. Because me versus Cheeto is a bigger fight than me versus Murab, me versus Corey. You know, those are big fights because I'm involved, but it's, I think it's twice as big of a fight as me versus the other people. I know that you are a big fan of meditation. So when you meditate upon 2024, the rematch, all of the goals that you have, I mean, how does Sugar Sean stay on the throne? By the end of 2024, I'd like to fight two times. You know, Cheeto, obviously, March. Uh, I would love to go out there and put his lights out. You know, winning the decision, is it boring? Is just that doesn't sound very exciting. Go out there. I mean, if it's a war, maybe, but even then, it's like put, taking someone out. They're done. They're finished. They couldn't continue. That's that's what I'm. That's what I want. Um, and then I would like to get another one in by the end of the year and be the biggest star in sports, not just combat sports. I think I go out there and put two beautiful performances together. I will be as big as Connor. And uh, people, when I say stuff like that, people are always like, "Oh, you want to be Connor?" But he's the biggest star in combat sports. Of course, I would, you know, want to be as big as him. Like. When people, when people say that, it sounds a little silly. All right, big time awards now being handed out. Male Fighter of the Year for 2023, and people aren't going to give you any grief for this, I assure you. No, absolutely. They're going to, but it doesn't matter. How do you question Islam Mahacha? Right? He has become the lightweight champion, fought Alexander Volkanovsky over in Australia, won a very competitive close fight. Then when Charles Oliveira got hurt, Volkanovsky steps up. This time he knocks him out. He beat the number one pound for pound fighter in the world twice in a calendar year. How do you question whether or not Islam Mahachev is the male fighter of the year? Hey, I think that's very fair. Look, I think some of the rematches maybe drew away from it or maybe fighting the smaller guy on short notice. But DC, you certainly make a fair point, and Islam did what he was supposed to do. I have Pejera. Alex Pear was the 185 pound world champion within this calendar year. He's the 205-pound champion in this calendar year, and the only fight he had in between is the one you're looking at right now where he became the number one contender, beating the former world champion in Blahovitz. This is just something very special. This sport is not supposed to be done this way, guys. From 1993 till darn near present, we found out that a grappling heavy offense is your best offense in fighting. Now, there's some guys that are contesting that, including this man, who I think was fighter of the year. My male fighter of the year, oh, I don't get a vote, but I would have gone Alexandre <laughs> Pantoja, yeah, right? Yeah, I think yeah. you could sure. have even gone Sean Strickland, maybe Leon Edwards, who closed the year with a win over Colby Covington. And Drake is Duplessis, just to insert his name into the show. His win over Robert Whitaker, one of the single biggest wins across 2023. All right, let's get to the women's shale. Your female fighter of the year for 2023. Oh, this is a hard one. I got to tell you, I really thought that the women did a good job. And this is what I'm doing called the stall because generally a producer will remind me what I said since oh. we had the meeting a week ago. All right. And it's Tatiana Suarez. Tatiana's coming back, guys. There was a report that she was out with a broken neck. I can't confirm that a year ago. There was other reports about it back, but I'm just speaking to the idea that it was something very serious. She has returned, though. She has returned to her weight class. She never made an excuse. She didn't appear to have ring rest. I would call her the dominant cruise of the division. She is my Women's Fighter of the Year. My Women's Fighter of the Year is Zhang Weili. Look, it could have been Alexa Grasso. Earlier, I said she beat Valentina the second time. No, it was a draw, and that cost her. But Zhang Weili could be the female fighter of the year every single year. She is dominant in her fight against Amanda Lemos. Landed more strikes in the championship fight in this division that's never been done. I, Amanda Nunes is gone. She's not ahead of her anymore. Shevchenko's not the champ. This woman is dominant, and she is my female fighter of the year. She's phenomenal. She is the greatest athlete ever. I've said that time and time again. Yeah, the greatest athlete he's ever seen. And oftentimes these conversations for fighter of the year center on the champions. But Lupe Godinez had as big a oh, year as is. any woman out there. And there were a lot of others. Aaron Blanchfield, as you mentioned. Alexa Grasso, not getting a fighter of the year from these two gentlemen. How about that? All right. A lot of options, of course. 2023 fight of the year. DC, you went with Moreno and Pantoja. There it is. I mean, the 125 pounders always deliver in this fight was amazing. Pantoja was so aggressive, and he hurt Moreno early. But every time Brandon Moreno was able to find space, he would pick Pantoja apart. And late in the fight, it was the wrestling of Pantoja that allowed for him to become the flyweight champion of the world. What a fight these two guys put on.
And Shale, your fight of the year. We go back to Perth, Western Australia in February. Islam Makashev and Alexander Volkanovsky. These guys made this fight organically with the help of our partner, Daniel Cormier, who called Volkanovsky into the ring over on Fight Island. I mean, I got to tell you, this was something so special. Dana White even said this fight went down as a top five drawing and selling fight in UFC history. They go out there and these guys go to war. You've got the undefeated GOAT, pound for pound GOAT and Volkanovsky taking on the heir apparent to the throne in Islam. This fight needed to happen. It was the right fight. I loved it. Rafael Fazib, Justin Gaethje. Oh my goodness. Jalen Turner, Dan Hooker, but the sure. fight of the year for me, and hopefully they survive, Irene Aldana, oh my goodness. Kudol Hosa. Oh my goodness. I mean, my goodness, some visuals yeah, after that, that was, fight. Yeah, that was crazy. a crazy one. All right, so 2023 was also a big year for the big men. We haven't spent a lot of time on the heavyweight division. Who in that division defined 2023 for you? Tom Aspinall, because Tom Aspinall represents hope. He represents hope for the future in the heavyweight division. He's a guy that is going to be here for a really long time. And with the way that he looked in that fight against Pavlovich, he looks like he's going to be around for a while and around the championship for a while. And nothing is better in a sport than having a heavyweight champion that stays around the top for a long time. And I got to go with John Jones, guys. Look, I'm not crazy. I, I, for me, stories need to be told accurately. I'm being told that John Jones has been a closet champion, that he grabs the belt uh, in March after taking three years off, and he hasn't defended it. Well, not so fast. He attempted to defend it uh, on July 7th, International Fight Week. He attempted to defend it in October. He tried to defend it at Madison Square Garden. This guy wants to be busy. All right, coming up next, we will offer up some predictions. However bold for 2024 as we start to look ahead, might we see some of the UFC's brightest stars return on big stages to the proven ground and maybe even to MMA prominence? Stay with us. You are watching the 2023 UFC Year in Review on ESPN. All right, welcome back to Vegas for our 2023 UFC Year in Review. Chael son and John Anik, Daniel Cormier on hand. 2023 is going to be a tough act to follow, but yeah. the pay-per-view lineup, Chael, for 2024 looks absolutely absurd. UFC 297, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, January 20th. Drake is Duplessis challenging Sean Strickland and got a little precursor at UFC 296 as well. And you didn't even look at your notes. Excellent job, Sean Anik. I got to tell you, man, look at this. Duplessis and Sean Strickland. And by the way, for anybody that's been under a rock and doesn't know, this is Gilbert Burns' family <laughs> in between them. So Sean very nicely asked the young people to move, and then he leaps over them and gets into a street fight with the guy that he's going to get paid a lot of money to fight in one month. I mean, it's just crazy to watch these guys go at it in the crowd like that. But like Dana White said, it was my fault. He goes, I put them next to each other. Why would I put them this close? You know, these guys are fighters, and it only adds to the excitement of the fight. I know it's not ideal, but come on, man. These are fighters, and fighters fight, so hey, I'm all the way in. And I know for you it's not ideal The UFC 298 is at the Honda Center in Anaheim, California, but you'll be there because a lot of people believe Ilya Topuria may be the stiffest challenge of Alexander Volkanovsky's featherweight reign. I could stay at home and lose a belt in Anaheim. That's how bad I am in that place. But let me tell you one thing. These two guys fighting for the championship is going to be amazing. Ilya Topuria is just meat and potatoes enough to where he might be an issue for Alexander Volkanovsky because Volkanovsky doesn't wow you. He's a guy that beats you with the basic, but so does Tapoya. And they don't like each other. Tapoya's chirping. He believes that he can get it done against the best pound pound fighter we have seen in the world for a very long time. Yeah. But how does Volk look when he goes back after getting knocked out? for the first time in his career. That's the real question. It's a timing issue. I mean, in the world of boxing, and history supports it, they don't, the fighters don't look the same if they come off a knockout. This is going to be a real test for Volk. He wanted the quick turnaround. Got to be careful what you ask for. Sometimes you might get it. And then, Shale, UFC 299, the Sugar Show descends upon yes, Miami. Does. Act 2, Cheeto Vera, Sean O'Malley. Hey, this is the right fight. Cheeto Vera has earned this, but surprisingly, it's the champ that wants it. It's O'Malley that has called for this. He said, I want that one back. And, you know, the first fight, he went to Cheeto Vera. Then, of course, the Sugar State Athletic Commission reviewed it. They called it a no contest. But these guys are going to figure out this time for the ultimate prize of a world championship and a main event of a pay Pay-per-view, come on. This I can't wait. And, and honestly, it, it is perfect. Miami, Sean O'Malley, huh. we went to Miami this year, and it was a phenomenal fight town, and Izzy led the day. So you got to bring a star to Miami, and no star is ready to shine brighter than Sean O'Malley. But Chino Vera feels like he has the fight style that can give O'Malley problems every single time. This will be a great fight. Hey, the fans love O'Malley. But everybody loves Shido. Right. He is the coolest guy 
on the planet. Going to be very interesting to see who has the crowd there coming up in March at UFC 299. All right, holiday wish list, Chael. I need a few fights that you hope we see in 2020. Sure, I'd like to get our active champion, Tom Aspinall, with our undisputed champion in John Jones. I would love to see Gaethje uh, versus Islam. I'm just told that that's going to happen. And Tatiana Suarez, she was my women fighter of the year versus Daniel's women fighter of the year in uh, Jean Wei Lee. They're the same weight class. It's time to fight. You know, for me, it always seems like I'm picking people that I know and I like. So look, my wish list is I want to see Islam Makhachev get a chance to fight Leon Edwards at 170 pounds. Then I do want to see, I want to see Joan Stipe, whichever of them, fight Tom Aspinall. And then I need to see Sean O'Malley get an opportunity to fight Devin Haney, wow. the talented boxer, wow. because they've been going back and forth. That would be a fun fight. Sold. You get a bad rap for not doing your homework, man. This guy's as prepared as any analyst out there. Sean O'Malley, Devin Haney. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. All right, well, this may sound hyperbolic, but how good is this first quarter of 2024 for the MMA leader? Among the highlights, February 24th, back to Mexico City. We hit Saudi Arabia for the first time on March 2nd. We have not been to Atlantic City in a long time. We'll be back there March 30th. UFC 300 in Vegas on April 13th. And also, Noche UFC from that sphere here in <laughs> Vegas in September. Absolutely can't wait for that. All right, welcome back to the 2023 UFC Year in Review show. John Anik, Chael Son, and Daniel Cormier. As we look ahead to 2024, a prediction for us for the new year. I feel like we are going to see a champion versus champion fight. I don't know who it's going to involve. Makachev has spoken of it. Edwards has spoken of it. Somebody will go up to the next weight class and challenge to become a double champion. I believe that happens next year. I love champ champ fights, so I'm all for that one. I got to tell you guys, I think that the timing of Strickland versus Duplissy is a little bit too convenient. I think they're trying to get a champion established for UFC 100, 300 to draw into the return of Adesanya. And Adesanya rematch with Strickland or finally closing out that piece of business that he and Duplessis got started. That's my prediction. We do see Izzy back, and I think we see him as quick as 300. All right, y'all may think I'm crazy, but I think we see Conor McGregor fight twice oh, in wow. 2024. Once in the octagon, once in the streets. No, I think he'll be said twice make it bold. in the octagon. I think we see Conor McGregor back. I just don't think he's going to enjoy his retirement if he doesn't collect a few more MMA scalps. I think we see Conor twice in the octagon in 2024. Perhaps some optimism there. All right, we got to get on out of here. That does it for the 2023 UFC Year in Review show. And indeed, what a year it was for the combat sports leader. With that, for Daniel Cormier, Chael Sonnen, and our outstanding crews in Bristol and Vegas, John Anik signing off. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. We will see you in 2024.